What's up everyone? My name is Royal Rebel, and in this video I'm going over some of the changes announced in July's developer update for Dead by Daylight. This update is definitely bringing some interesting changes to the game. Some of the big changes include survivor disconnect bots, a report feedback log, reworks to the Onrio, hook grabs, brand new part, and a ton of survivor and killer perks. Some of these changes are live in, in this week's PTB along with Nicolas Cage and his perks. Starting off with the survivor disconnect bots, I think this is something a lot of players have been waiting for. Especially if you play a killer like Nurse or Pinhead and have a high rate of disconnect once survivors figure out who you are, as well as the players left one man down at the start of the match, the disconnect penalty is still in place, so no one gets a free pass just because they're replaced with a bot, but the lobby will be notified when a bot takes over. The AI for this bot is supposed to be the same AI bot that you can get in custom lobbies. So far from what I've seen since the PTB launch is that these bots are fairly smart. They do mimic a decent amount of survivor inter interactions like teabagging and flashlight clicking, which I have to say is pretty funny. Um, the biggest challenge that comes with these bots is balancing the AI so that it's not too strong or too weak. And that in and of itself is a complicated task because that balance also depends on other players skill levels. So it will probably be a while until everyone's happy with the AI skill level but the developers are continuing to work on it. Next up the developers are giving more information towards our reports of other players. Basically they'll be notifying players when a report they make towards someone results in a ban via a pop-up when loading into the game. If a player gets multiple bans you're only notified of the one that you submitted and honestly I don't think this feature is going to be that much of a game change but it is nice to see the developers have recognized how frustrating it can be to send a report and not hear anything back, especially if you have a case like someone's hacking or harassing you. Now the developers are implementing a change I was surprised to see and that's removing grabs from players when attempting an unhook. Mostly because of all the things I've heard players complain about, this is actually pretty low on the list. The goal of this change is to end the awkward standoffs that happen when a killer is trying to camp a hook. Basically like how they got rid of hatch standoffs. This change isn't going to end hook trades by any means. In fact, the developers specifically point out that removing grabs will most likely end in a trade because killers can still hit survivors while going for the unhook. And for the entire interaction, killers should be able to get in two hits. So the strategy of needing multiple survivors to successfully unhook against a camping killer will still very much be needed. Now the developers are also nerfing brand new part. This one I am disappointed in because it clearly is a change that's tailored to either high MMR or Swift. In the update they specifically call out a scenario of multiple survivors bringing brand new parts and that being the issue. And honestly in like the over 1500 hours I've put in this game in like the last three years I can't even remember a time that I've seen more than two people if that bring brand new parts. I will say I know I've seen plenty of content on TikTok and YouTube of people pushing builds to the absolute limits and all using brand new parts to test this hypothetical of how quickly can I get a gen done, but those clips were almost always in customs in a very idealized position, such as one that required four players on a singular gener generator with full stacks of fast track. So unless you've got a killer that suddenly decided to throw the match, there's never going to be a setup where all survivors on death hook are going to be working on the same gen with full toolboxes. And that's why I think it's really silly. But how the change works is survivors will still have to hit the difficult skill check and instead of granting X amount of progress on the generator, the part reduces 10 charges from the generator. For a regression perk, they will follow whatever the charge requirements are, so less charges means less regression. And for comparison of how much brand new part is getting nerfed, prior to this change, brand new part saved 22 and a half seconds. Now it'll only save 10 seconds. On to Onrio. Onrio is getting a pretty significant rework. There's no longer a range limit to survivors getting condemned. When she teleports, all survivors on the map will get a three quarter stack of condemned. The only way to avoid this is by carrying a cursed tape. Her TV cooldown for teleporting will be 70 seconds, previously it was 100, but TVs have a longer cooldown after a survivor inserts a cursed tape. It'll be 90 seconds instead of 60. The goal of this is supposed to make it easier to spread her condemn. The Arnio's cursed tapes have also become more dangerous to hold. Getting hit while holding the tape applies a stack of condemned, and if a survivor is hooked while carrying a tape, everyone gets a stack of condemned. However, Survivors no longer passively build Condemn if holding a tape, and tapes can be placed in any TV around the map. There are also some adjustments made to her manifestation. She can no longer be stunned while manifested. 
Chases are prevented when her manifestation is active, making it harder to track her, and manifesting removes bloodlust. Overall, I think these are some interesting changes for Onryo. It currently reads a little strong to me, but not having played Onryo in a long time, I can't really say that for certain. If anything, maybe this will open her up for new players to try. I have a feeling though we will see a lot more condemn builds coming out since these changes really do lean into making her ability more powerful. And then lastly for this video, Coldwind Farms is the next map up for a rework. If you weren't already aware, Behavior has been working towards updating all the maps, including rebalancing and giving aesthetic updates to the maps. With this coming update, they are working on Coldwind Farms. Two of the goals include breaking the circle from Fractured Cowshed, which honestly I'm excited for because it's pretty boring that all the tiles loop around the map and the center is just this massive dead zone. The second goal of the rework is the Slaughterhouse and Rancid Abattoir to be less effective for looping. But essentially the developers believe that Coldwind Farms is too survivor sided and they're looking to break the tiles that survivors loop best. While I don't mind the changes to Fractured Cowshed, I will be a little sad to see the Slaughterhouse open up to favor killers. But overall, I am really excited to see this update because so far I've loved all the map reworks. Now the rest of this update includes tweaks to survivor and killer perks as well as killer add-ons. I'm not going to cover those just because it is a massively long list, but I will link the developer update down below in the description so you guys can read what they're changing. But this is what DVD has planned in their July developer update. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can bring you more Dead by Daylight content. And if you want to check out my Twitch streams, don't forget to follow me there so you can be notified of when I go live.